It is now my pleasure to introduce my friend and yours, Natalie Sonnen. What do you need to know about Natalie Sonnen? Natalie is the Executive Director of Life Canada. She is a ballerina, and she was born in South Africa, so she's awesome. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Thank you, Pavel. Pavel, too, was born in South Africa, so that says a lot about Pavel. <laughs> um, it's a, a real pleasure. He wasn't a ballerina. Um, <laughs> it's a real pleasure to be here tonight with all of you. Thank you so much for coming and for your support um, of Life Canada. Um, I don't want to take up too much time in my talk because really, uh, we want to hear from Bobby Schindler, um, but I do want to share with you a little bit of the work that uh, we are doing at Life Canada and the Canadian Institute for Education on the Family. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a presentation. Um, Life Canada exists to achieve three main ends. The first is that we have amassed an unprecedented body of knowledge about how the general public views the life issues. Life Canada has been polling the Canadian public consistently since 2002, and our polling data has been used for all manner of public policy decision making referenced by Canada's leading journalists, politicians, senators, educators, researchers, and those interested in these particular topics. Our second main uh, uh, aim is to serve our member groups. There is a large body of approximately 112 local and provincial groups scattered across our nation. Approximately 80 of them affiliate with us. This small army of grandmothers and grandfathers, mothers and fathers, single moms and dads, university students and high school students have a profound impact on the small communities that they serve. These groups are very likely to be the only outward presence bringing the pro-life message to their communities across Canada. And our third main aim is to bring changes in public policy on life issues to the attention of our membership to give them practical guidance in how they can effectively respond. We exist to inform the common man, our religious men and women, people in the pews, about what is currently taking place in our country and how they can best address these issues. Many times, these issues loom large and overwhelming. Nonetheless, we exist to remind all citizens of goodwill and especially Catholics and other Christian denominations, that despite the fact that our cause may seem lost, all of us have a moral duty to defend the truth about human life and to defend human life itself. When I'm feeling down about different things that are going on uh, in our country in regards to these issues, I'm often reminded of a, a Facebook meme um, that shows a pregnant belly and across the, the pregnant belly is written the words, you face your greatest opposition when you're closest to your biggest miracle. So <laughs> um, it often feels like that. And this quote often comes to mind as well, as well. The world is on fire. As in the time of the ancients, we are engaged in a struggle to save Western civilization. Only this time, we have cell phones. <laughs> So I'm going to uh, just share with you some slides um, about, and very quickly go through these slides, just about uh, the work that we're, we're doing uh, with Life Canada. If we can queue up the uh, slides. And also in here will be a very short little two minute vid video. So I had mentioned to you um, our national polling. So in March of 2016, we ran a national poll. And um, this was right uh, during the debates on euthanasia and assisted suicide. Our findings were very interesting. And in fact, they were uh, debated or used in debate at the Senate when actually the Senate was, some of the senators were attempting to 
uh, mitigate some of the harm that was currently being done by the legislation. Um, the slide you're looking at here shows that um, really only 9% of people were actually um, in line with the legislation as it stands today. The rest of those numbers there show that people expected and thought that if euthanasia and assisted suicide came into play in Canada, they would be for extremely severe cases only. We also, um, uh, in our polling, we looked at a subset of elderly to see how they were responding, so senior citizens. And um, very interestingly enough, 66% of Canadians were opposed to forcing doctors or religious institutions to participate, um, while seniors were 81 and 73% respectively. So we had, um, the poll is quite detailed, it's quite large, you can uh, find it on our uh, lifecanada.org website and um, uh, lots of very in interesting information. Um, our second aim is to serve our member groups. So from coast to coast, we have 80 member groups. We have board representation from seven provinces, and we have a membership of over 10,000 individuals. One of our largest projects to date um, that we launched uh, in October of last year was our Life Collective. And this is a giant web platform on which we host all of our little groups sites, or at least have the potential to give every little group in Canada a state-of-the-art website. So there's just a, a drop-down menu of some of the groups that are uh, currently on the site. Um, the images, uh, the ability to share articles across the collective with all the other groups and to share our events has really united our groups across <laughs> Canada and made us all the more stronger. This is a little video now. Bet you didn't know that the educational arm of the pro-life movement is a massive network of over 100 local and provincial groups. That's right. There are over 100 organizations in Canada dedicated to educating their communities about the life issues. And over 80 of these groups affiliate with their national organization, Life Canada. Thousands of people who care about women and children, who want to protect life at all of its stages, are involved right across our vast country. They are supporters, volunteers, staff, and board members. Life Canada represents all of these groups on a national level and works hard to provide them with quality programs, educational resources, and national multimedia campaigns. Now imagine that all of these groups were actually joined together on one giant web platform, instantly sharing their resources and ingenuity. If you can grasp that, then you have grasped the Life Collective. The Life Collective is an unprecedented way for groups to share material through a private, member-only forum, while maintaining an individualized web presence. To their communities, it will appear as if each group has its own website. The Life Collective will allow groups to share the work they do, the articles they write, and the events they hold, all at the click of a button. Life Collective administrators will keep groups up to date with changing technology. Cutting-edge graphics and campaigns will be produced and shared across the lifecollective.io so that groups can respond in a timely fashion to the most pressing issues of our day. The lifecollective.io will also help smaller groups who struggle to maintain a web presence at all and who lack the ability to interact with their target audience on social media. The lifecollective.io provides state-of-the-art technology with ongoing technical support, all at a fraction of the cost. By pooling minimal resources of Life Canada's member organizations, the lifecollective.io will help groups across Canada communicate life-affirming messages. Join us. To find out more, go to www.lifecollective.io. The uh, Life Collective has enabled us to do a lot of training through webinars of our member groups. So we've done a lot of things with them to help them uh, get up to speed in terms of the technology and the social media. So we've done uh, Facebook and Twitter integration, uh, teaching them how to use Google Analytics, how to use MailChimp, which is uh, a, a mailer, a giant web mailer. 
um, and we're going to be embarking on leadership training with our groups as well. So um, all of this is uh, very important in terms of our member groups. Here's a little bit about our um, educational initiatives. So part of what Life Canada is doing, as I explained, is helping to keep um, Canadians aware of changes in public policy, but we're also working to um, educate people uh, like this tonight in the classroom and um, in, in different kinds of venues across the country. One of the things we do is principle-based education um, with the Canadian Institute for Education on the Family. So uh, we use Robert Spitzer's um, Life Principles, for example, and we're, we're teaching to form the intellect, to help connect the, the intellect with the heart. Um, one of the things that our polling has showed us is that there's a lot of misplaced compassion in our culture where people will in general not like the idea of late-term abortion or euthanasia on demand but they do want a little bit of abortion or a little bit of euthanasia at the earliest stages or in the most you know with abortion and then in the most um, grave stages with euthanasia so what they're not getting is the principle if you want a little bit of abortion that's that's and that, that is abortion, you know, they're not really understanding the principles and so we are really having to um, educate from the ground up. So it's very important to be able to give people um, the reasons why these are, are wrong from a very fundamental uh, perspective so that they have a connected intellect and heart and can really understand why these things are wrong. Um, another avenue of education is our Reflections magazine. Tonight as you leave, um, I have four lovely ladies who are volunteering with us tonight and they'll hand you a magazine as you go out the door. Um, these magazines uh, look at a single issue with depth and clarity. We pull in some of the best minds uh, to offer um, articles and input um, on these issues. The two uh, on the screen there, the Reflections magazine is, um, sorry, the one is uh, on conscience protection and our latest is on our principle-based principle -based education. Um, this was a previous uh, magazine that we did and thanks to Father Lawrence Donnelly, we ordered enough for his whole parish so that uh, a magazine went into the bulletin of, of for every parishioner at St. Joseph's in Langley. Our latest magazine was put into the hands of 1,200 Catholic educators at the most recent uh, Faith Day in the Archdiocese. So that was a, um, a wonderful thing. Um, we run things through social media like a thunderclap. Um, educating people that uh, in Canada every day 280 babies approximately will die by abortion. That uh, through our thunderclap we were able to reach 195,000 people with that message. We work in partnership with other groups. So we work with the National Campus Life Network, for example, and the Office of uh, Life, Marriage and Family, thanks to Michelle Smiley. Um, and we put on a day of training uh, this year we also, um, that's myself there with uh, Mark Warawa and uh, Dr. Will Johnston um, at an event, a, a packed house in Langley speaking again on the euthanasia issue. <coughs> this was a debate again to a packed room uh, in March of this year at Trinity Western University. So we um, educate um, broadly and, and as widely as we can. Um, these are uh, the, with the whole onslaught of euthanasia and assisted suicide, we wrote to government, we submitted briefs on behalf of our 80 member groups. Um, this is me speaking at a hearing with John Aldag and Mark Warawa. So we, we, at all levels of government, at the House and at the Senate, um, with the previous conservative government with their external panel and with the current government with their special joint committee, um, submitted briefs. Um, and I also spoke at the March for Life and the NCLN, the National Campus Life Dinner, uh, this year. This is my, uh, one of our uh, staff, Anastasia Bowles, um, taking this picture here of 250 youth in the Diocese of Hamilton. 
Um, she gave them a day conference at the Culture of Life Leadership Convention, and they're waving little flags there from the uh, We Need a Law campaign. So we're always finding ways of working with um, other organizations. Again, that's Anastasia there. Uh, she did a tour of uh, northeastern Ontario, to be exact, to some places that I can't pronounce there, um, and North Bay, Ontario. Uh, again, speaking in schools, uh, again, to large groups and giving them the message of life. Um, this is me making headlines uh, in Smithers. <laughs> on a uh, northern BC tour that I did through Smithers, Houston, and Terrace. And these are just a little picture here of some of our groups across Canada, um, some of the uh, ways in which they um, stand up uh, for life um, across the country. So part of what we do also is national media campaigns. Um, our abortioninCanada.ca site has 120,000 visitors. We run national campaigns. This is something that a little group could not possibly do, um, but we facilitate. So we create the campaign. We put together the website, the videos, the billboards, the, the pamphlets, you name it, and then we make it available to our groups across the country, and they participate by putting up the billboards, handing out the, the literature, promoting the website. And um, this particular campaign that we did recently, the You'll Never Regret campaign, uh, was particularly successful across the country. We had a um, beautiful series of videos of young women sharing their testimonies. Darby there was seen four, a quarter of a million times, 50,000 times. Um, and that's her little baby, Noah, in her hands. There's a billboard up in one of our um, communities across the country. Um, life chain signs uh, in various cities. You'll never regret loving this much was our message. And in collaboration, again, with the National Campus Life Network, um, with student groups in campuses, uh, most, mostly in Western Canada, uh, but also in other regions. And tonight, if you go home and you happen to go down 15th and Lonsdale, thanks to the North Shore Pro-Life Society, this is what you'll see right at the corner there is our um, little thing. So thank you, North Shore Pro-Life. So just to share with you our exciting new projects, uh, adding value to the Life Collective, I'm going to introduce you to something called the Dying Healed Program, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the uh, curriculum-based work that we're doing. We need to add value to our Life Collective. So one of the things that we want to do is called an education experience page. So um, in terms of keeping our groups interested in the Life Collective, um, keeping it updated, keeping it new, um, all the time. Um, this is the kind of thing, I, it's very hard in a, in a single slide to show what an education experience page is, but basically it's an appeal to the heart, um, it's pictorial, and it tells a story. So this actually come, those images come from an, an education experience page where you can see a story is actually being told. How difficult it is for you know women to uh, to get water from a well and how much it changes um, somebody's life when you can have a well in a, in a developing nation. That's, that's from an education experience page. So what we want to do um, is build something like that in the Life Collective that all the websites on the Life Collective um, would have featured on their site. So in some way, appealing, it's a storyboard, appealing to um, an emotional appeal about uh, the life issues. Um, the Dying Healed program, uh, and we're working in collaboration with Vancouver Right to Life on this. This is a program, the, the, the name of it comes from um, the, the idea that we cannot, all of us, avoid death and we cannot heal physically but we can heal emotionally and spiritually. And through our emotional and spiritual healing, we can have reconciliation with our friends and our families. We can have reconciliation with our creator. The end of life is a particularly important time in life. 
and it's a very important time in terms of um, as Bobby will, will elucidate more, coming to terms with what our life has been and where we're about to go. So we feel that it's extremely important to have a program that's rolled out across the country through our member groups where they are trained and accredited to go into long-term care facilities, hospice facilities, where they can uh, minister one-on-one -on -one with people who are lonely, uh, people who are afraid, people who are tempted to commit suicide or take, take uh, um, the euthanasia and assisted suicide path. Um, one of the statistics this year that came out of Holland was that 67% of people list being lonely as one of the top reasons for choosing euthanasia. Um, it's of, of great importance that we reach out to these people before um, the right to die people actually do because the right to die people are also active and if they find that there's people that are lonely or feeling desolate, um, they could be prime targets for euthanasia. So this is an accredited program that we would like to roll out across Canada through our member groups. We're working to develop it with the, uh, Vancouver Right to Life, and we want to um, use them as our pilot group. Um, so we're very much looking forward to that. And just our last project that we're working on is with the Canadian Institute for Education on the Family. Um, they helped to put this magazine together. We've been working with them on a pilot school, um, Holy Cross, where they have been teaching this curriculum with great success. And we are identifying other groups within the other schools within the Archdiocese and across Canada to be able to implement this uh, wonderful, wonderful curriculum by Father Robert Spitzer and Camille Pauly. So we've been working um, sort of as a big team effort there, Life Canada, the Canadian Institute for Education on the Family, and Father Spitzer. Um, so the, the funding that we need for this project is really in the area of marketing, of being able to reach schools across Canada and to introduce them to this. Our magazine was a big push in that direction, and we've had tremendous feedback from that. So um, just before we go, I wanted to leave you with a quote. We um, often send um, e-news out to our people, and we try to be judicious about it so you're not getting inundated with emails from Life Canada. Um, but just before we sent out, uh, just before euthanasia uh, was legalized this year in June, we did send this out. And I just want to... Uh, read this to you because I think it's very apropos for our times. Um, it's easy to get discouraged for sure, but in the end, all I need to know is that I did everything that I could to try to change things, even if it feels futile. We have a great authority to answer to after all. I often feel like Oscar Schindler at the end of Schindler's List when he says, I could have saved one more person but I didn't, why? There should be no limit to what we are willing to do to save those in peril of death. So I continue to write our legislators, post on social media, have conversations and pray and hope. We are called to be faithful lights in the darkness. May God give us strength to shine in these dark days. Thank you very much. <laughs>